Well, hey guys, today I wanna to talk about lipedema. What is lipedema? What causes it and what treatments are available? Lipedema is a condition that primarily affects women. It involves the disproportionate symmetrical abnormal accumulation of subcutaneous fat in the lower legs, lipedema sounds an awful lot like another condition, lymphedema, but make no mistake, they're not the same thing. In contrast to lipedema, with lymphedema, there's no abnormal accumulation of subcutaneous fat, but rather there is impairment in lymphatic drainage, resulting in accumulation of fluid and lower leg swelling. Lymphedema might be the result of obesity, but it might also be the result of of a surgery that damaged the lymphatic. Lymphedema can be unilateral, affecting one side, or bilateral, whereas lipedema is bilateral. Both legs, lipedema is a chronic and progressive condition. As it progresses, it can impair lymphatic drainage, so you can have both lipedema and lymphedema. Lipedema primarily affects women. It's thought to be related to estrogen. It has its onset in puberty and may get worse with pregnancy. These are periods in a woman's life when estrogen levels increase. It's also related to genetics. Like I've said before, anything that's going on with you that's uncomfortable, you don't like, you can blame on your family. There is often a positive family history of lipedema in patients who have lipedema. Because of the role of estrogen in this condition, it primarily affects women, though rarely it can affect men in certain situations that might lead to high estrogen levels in men, such as cirrhosis of the liver. What is going on in lipedema? What causes is it? Well, more research is needed to fully understand the underlying pathophysiology, meaning disease development process, that leads to lipedema. But as it stands now, it appears to be related to an increase in size and number of fat cells, as well as a problem with the blood vessels being too leaky and too fragile. Blood vessel fragility leads to leakage of fluid and protein into the surrounding tissues and the generation of inflammation. When you look at someone with lipedema, what you're gonna notice is that they have symmetrically voluminous legs that are disproportionately enlarged in comparison to their trunk. Their torso may be slim, but their lower legs appear large. Lipedema leads to the appearance of column-shaped or lobular legs. It spares the feet, the toes, which leads to the characteristic cuffing sign. In contrast, lymphedema does not spare the feet or the toes or the hands, and you will get swelling of those tissues as well in lymphedema. But like I said, lipedema, as it progresses, can impair lymphatic drainage, so you may have some overlap. Speaking of progression, how does this condition progress? It progresses through three characteristic stages. Stage one, the overlying skin appears smooth, no abnormalities are detected, and the underlying fatty tissue is homogenous, meaning all the same. In the second stage, however, the overlying skin appears uneven, and you can feel subcutaneous fatty nodules that for the patient are tender and uncomfortable. And once the condition progresses to stage three, there are lobules of fat, skin folds, and some overlying thickening of the skin. The tissue has a nodular structure. Lipedema at first glance can be easily confused with other conditions. Some other features of lipedema, aside from the abnormal accumulation of fat in the lower legs, is that these nodules are very tender. Likely related to the fact that the blood vessels are leaky, these patients bruise quite easily. Their overlying skin can be exquisitely sensitive to a light touch or pressure. Lipedema is aggravated by prolonged standing or sitting, and it may be alleviated in terms of symptoms by lying down. This likely has to do with return of fluid to the heart as we are lying down, as our legs are more elevated, that likely alleviates some of the symptoms. One of the things for patients who struggle with lipedema that can be very frustrating is that they're often told to lose weight. Losing weight definitely can help because it just offloads some of the pressure on the lower legs in particular. However, as a patient loses weight, whether it be diet and exercise, weight loss surgery, that actually doesn't result in reduction in the size of the legs because that enlarged fatty tissue is not responsive to diet and exercise. Many patients with lipedema do have 
overweight or obesity. In these cases, weight management is a super important part of managing this chronic progressive condition in terms of improvement in mobility and reducing complications. However, weight loss alone does not reverse lipedema. And as they lose weight, their trunk will be thin, their face will be thin, but they'll still have volume in the legs. The condition progresses, the fat cells increase in both size and number abnormally, leading to the accumulation of fat. And this over time can impair mobility significantly. That coupled with the pain can make it quite difficult for patients to exercise and unfortunately might contribute to unwanted weight gain, which further worsens their symptoms. The proliferation of the fatty tissue as it progresses to stage three and you have obvious skin folds, that can lead to skin friction, rubbing, breakdown of the skin, and an increase in skin infections. Intertrigo is a common complication at this point. Intertrigo is just a term we use to describe inflammation of the skin and the skin folds. Intertrigo can then lead to an increased risk of like candidal yeast infections, a candidal intertrigo. Check out my video on signs of skin yeast infection. I talk more about it there and how to manage that complication. Lipedema can progress to a point where it actually becomes more challenging for patients to even walk because they develop almost a knock-kneed stance that can impair their mobility. How do you know if you have lipedema? Well, it's important to see your healthcare provider because an accurate diagnosis is key. There are many conditions that could easily be confused for lipedema. Lymphedema could be confused for lipedema. Also, many patients might have overlap of both lipedema and lymphedema. There's also a condition known as lipohypertrophy. Patients with hypothyroidism can develop a condition known as myxedema, where you have these large plaques on the lower legs that could easily be confused for lipedema. So an accurate diagnosis is important. You may have to undergo some imaging tests to look at the underlying lymphatic tissue, the blood vessels, etc. Early diagnosis is key because this is a chronic and progressive condition and early intervention can make a difference long term as far as the trajectory and overall impact on quality of life. One of the most important things is maintaining an active lifestyle. Doing regular exercise is important for improving circulation and improve uh, return of any fluid through the lymphatics back up to the heart. Now again this is not the same thing as lymphedema but you easily can develop lymphedema along with it and the condition does worsen with prolonged standing, but exercise may improve it. The other thing that is a must with lipedema is compression. Wearing compression garments, compression stockings up to the thigh is really important to help compress some of that and reduce the burden of pressure on the lower legs. Also super important for reducing the symptoms of sensitivity and pain that these patients experience. Of course, you need to be very careful as the skin does bruise easily related to those leaky blood vessels. This is a mainstay of management in the early stages of lipedema. Later on, however, patients would benefit from either manual or mechanical lymphatic drainage. Complete physical decongestive therapy involving either manual or mechanical lymphatic drainage coupled with compression garments is the go-to for lipedema once it's in the advanced stages. Then there's surgical intervention, specifically liposuction, to remove some of that abnormally enlarged fatty compartment. Liposuction actually can really be a game changer for lipedema, not only in reducing the volume, essentially debulking, but also in alleviating symptoms, symptoms of pain, discomfort. It can really make a huge difference and those improvements can be sustained after the surgery. All right, guys, so that is lipedema. It's a condition that a lot of women struggle with. It's very uncomfortable and it's misunderstood. A lot of women, for example, who have this condition might be told by a passerby, like, you need to go on a diet, you need to exercise more, you need to lose weight. And while those things are very important for this condition, they don't necessarily reverse it and there's a lot more going on and more specific directed therapies that may be indicated. So I really Really hope this video was helpful and informative in clarifying what this condition is, what the outlook of it is like, and provide you some understanding of what the potential treatment options are that are available. Now, speaking of estrogens, on the end slate, I'm going to put my recent video on warning signs that your estrogen is too low. So check that one out next if you missed it. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Mm -hmm.